ambush is an art. When well laid, there is nothing for your unsuspecting prey to do, except perhaps scream, before they are flattened against the ground like a rather ugly pancake. My most recent experience as a Herrera began as all do. On the ground. I was lucky enough to smell a carcass nearby, and hoping for something with organs, I made my way toward it. There was a time when the lungs were the most valuable organs in a carcass. In this case, a lung being the only remaining organ is an incredible disappointment. Made worse by the Serato that decided to march on over while I was investigating. Lucky for me, he decided not to end my minuscule existence, and though he took the remainder of the carcass, it was useless to me anyway. I continued along, snatching a frog to fill my second diet slot, before wandering down toward the lower falls to investigate another dead carcass. This one was perfect, untouched, and I collected the intestines needed to complete my perfect diet. Tiny and fragile, though, I needed to seek higher ground in order to remain safe from the much larger dangers lurking in the dark. Today, the South Plains was heavily populated. By Carnips. Not ideal for a tiny creature such as a Herrera, but they did keep the local gators well fed. By some miracle, another Herrera spotted and killed a Dryo that was wandering through the area. With how rare Dryos are, the opportunity to hunt one as a Herrera is just about null. Despite my hunger, I left the other to their kill, and made do with a sad frog for now. Perhaps there would be leftovers when the other Herrera was finished. Scraps, though, were quickly the least of my concern. One of the many Carnos showed up, grabbing the Dryo carcass and shaking out its organs before becoming distracted by the Herrera that had killed it. If I was quick, maybe I could steal one or two organs. Unfortunately for me, the Carno happened to turn and spot me lurking. Herrera is not fast, but in this case, I was just fast enough. Dryo carcass forgotten, the Carno ran off after a boar, and I took full advantage of the free meal before I had to log out for the afternoon. After allowing myself to grow for a time, I returned to awareness of my surroundings just in time to spot a pair of small raptors rolling in the mud. As I was quite hungry, I took aim at one of the two before fleeing back to the safety of my cliff to wait out the second. The second raptor, however, had different plans. Silly thing. Now nearly grown and feeling sassy, I took to the ground. I'd been watching a highly aggressive Tenanto in the area, and the moment it saw me touch the floor, the chase was on. Luckily for me, I was faster, and already knew exactly where I was headed. After the first slap, he attempted to bait me into another pounce. Unfortunately for him, his reaction time was not great, and I escaped unharmed and highly amused. He retreated to the mud pit, where he could avoid further pounces and manage the heavy bleed that was dealt by each slap. This mud camping, though, caught the attention of a hungry Carno. Oh, how the tables had turned. Once the terror of the south, smacking small players left and right, now 
the Tenno was reduced to cowering in the mud, hoping to heal enough to hold his own before his water drained too much to remain there. I, however, was determined to finish what he'd started. I have no idea how many slaps it takes to kill an adult Tenanto, but I'd be happy to find out. Attacking it in the mud, though, was dangerous. His trot is faster than mine, and his attacks have much greater range. The Carno returned, bringing a smaller one with him, and I decided it was time to return to being just a general menace. If the Tenno was going to keep camping in the mud, at the very least I could smack the Carnos around a little. Me attacking the larger one, though, gave the Tenno exactly the advantage he needed. Now the Carno was bleeding heavily, and the Tenno was healing. Unfortunately for me, neither stuck around long enough to become my next meal. Growing hungrier by the minute and struggling to find food that wasn't already claimed, I made my way to the waterfall. Here I'd heard raptors chattering, and where there are raptors, there is the potential for a proper meal. My initial approach was cautious. Being seen would put them on guard and make ambushes more difficult. They'd been nesting, and a dead hatchling was a quick snatch and grab to at least hold me over for an extra few minutes. The food given by the tiny, near-rotten carcass was almost useless, and I decided to check out what the pack itself had to offer. Once in place, I knew I'd come to the right spot. Mix packers. Not in my stomping grounds, you don't. I wiped the juvie raptor without being spotted by the oblivious adult getting a drink nearby, then set my sights on the stegling. The smart stego decided after being jumped on once that it was time to move on. Meal secured, I took what I needed and then found a safe spot to wait out for the server restart. Upon my return, however, I saw that the mix packing had only gotten worse. Eight raptors, a serato, and however many dinos were in the river. Ew. There's not much a tiny tear like a Herrera can do against these odds, but I was determined to do my part. After ending another small raptor, though, the dino and his serato ward came to take my kill for themselves. Oh no. That's not how this works. I ended the Serato as well, before heading to the lower falls for water and stamina. Some time later, I was back to being desperately hungry and harassing the mix packers. Now a pair of Dilos had joined their ranks, and I was at my wit's end. They extended the claw of friendship, and I, unwilling to grovel for their goodwill, hissed out an angry retort. They moved to the mud pit, and I followed, flinging myself from my cliff to slap anything I thought might be small enough or close enough to take heavy damage. Though I'd have preferred to send them back to the respawn screen, weakening them enough to prevent them from helping in hunts against those who would not join them was the most I could do with my tiny stature and less than ideal drop heights. Eventually, they got sick of me, and the raptors I'd hit fled to heal somewhere as far away from me as they could get, while the Serato and the Dylos attempted to trap me on the cliff. I assumed they thought I was low on stamina, and that by preventing me from regaining, they could trap me there indefinitely. Little did they know that I am well versed in resting spots within my space. Acting indifferent, like I wasn't on the verge of starvation. I took a seat, daring them to slide down to me, hoping they'd take the plunge and splat on the ground below. They thought better of it, and realizing that they couldn't stop me from getting stamina, the mix pack finally moved on, leaving me to my peace and their food. I went for water once more and discovered that the mix packers had trapped a Tonanto. The herbivore was low on stamina, 
fending off the dialos as best it could. When all seemed lost, she ran to the edge of the waterfall and disappeared. Perfect. Dinner for me. The hunters would have to go down and around to get the body. I could simply go cliff diving. What I found, though, was unexpected. A dead Dilo partway down the cliff, and the Tenno in a hole above me, regaining her stamina and healing from the attack she had suffered. Whether she could get back up or if she would fall remained to be seen. But I had a snack now to continue watching the show. Very carefully, I climbed up to the Tenno. Whether she lived or died, I stood in solidarity with her. She'd killed one of the members of the plague within South Plains. As the Serato joined back up with the Dilos, I wondered if escape was even an option for her. Sometime later, I found myself back on my cliff above the mud pit. The Tenno had escaped her waterfall prison and wandered by, catching the eye of the Dilo that was very creepily staring down at me. It ran off after the Tenno, and I waited until they returned. The Tenno into the mud and the Dilo lurking outside the mud pit. Eh, it looked small enough. I leaped straight into the Tenno's bite. The battle against mixed packing continued. The Dilo returned to the river where it cuddled up with a Dino for a time. I spent the next while searching for the right moment to pounce. When he finally picked a fight with a medium-sized Carno and was forced to back off, I knew my moment had come. His demise couldn't have come at a better time. I needed the food and the diets badly. I find it quite amusing, the confidence of Stego players sometimes. As noon rolled around, I spotted a fresh spawn Stego having a snack beside the tree line. Now, most juveniles that hear a Herrera hop into a nearby tree are known to look up and move away for safety. Not this Stego. As I positioned myself for a pounce, he wandered lazily into a small bush. Clearly, he didn't care that I was there. Yet. Back up the tree I went, and he meandered out of the bush and stopped. Almost as if he was waiting for me to try again. Okay, now I had his attention. He began to flee, and I attempted one more pounce. Bad aim. That's fine. There's no escape now. I got more bold, fighting on the ground, ambushing dinos in ways they'd least expect.
while I do find more involved fighting overall more satisfying. There is something about waiting until that perfect moment, stalking someone from above for up to an hour, and then quite literally yeeting them out of existence. Or at the very least, giving them a reason to fear the trees. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like and a comment. If you're new around here or haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel for more content like this. Join my Discord. The link is in the description. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next one.